who, um, who, who, who are Native Americans from the reservation, who themselves are searching for Bigfoot. And they've had their own experiences, one, one of which was very similar to the, the terrible smell you had. And so they're kind of convinced that um, that they that they're gonna they're gonna hunt down Bigfoot and find them. They go out they go out hunting Bigfoot heavily armed with AR-15s and big 44 pistols. A little different than the uh, the average uh, Bigfoot guide leader. Now I'm gonna jump in there. I've had a several Bigfoot hunters go out. And tell me when I have interviewed them on the show, I go, what do you go out there when you, and you're out there looking for Bigfoot? Do you take any protection? And you know, a lot, it shocks me. A lot of them say, no, I don't take anything. I've had one guy say, yeah, I carry a, a pocket knife with a four inch blade. Even if you didn't run into aggressive Bigfoot, I mean, there's other critters out in the forest when you're way out there. You're crazy. You know, there's even crazy people out in out in the woods. You you never want to go out there without some type of protection. And I just had to put that in there. Yeah, I think that a lot of us us use that uh, we come in peace type approach. Um, I I carry bear spray, but that's about really all I ever take when I go. So so getting back to Dulcie, uh, when 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 we tried to we talked to a lot of native people, men, women. Um, they, they all have their experiences. Some are Bigfoot, some are orbs, some are strange other things that scare the heck out of them. But they're not very willing to go on camera, so that, which, which is pretty typical of Native people. What we did find through our, through our two guys, um, the, sort of the town crier of the reservation who, was, who everybody tells the story to, and he was happy to go on camera and talk about his own experiences and other people's experiences. Um, the, the wife of and the mother of the the son uh, had her own experience, kind of a white Bigfoot on a road when she was driving to the reservation from another town, and that scared the heck out of her. And mostly, these, these native people were, were were kind of scared by their they they weren't embracing their their paranormal phenomenon at all. It kind of bugged them in general. Uh, the uh, the sheriff, the, the 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 guy who, the father who took us on was an ex-policeman on the reservation, so he got a lot of reports too. And at one point, he said he stopped this military van that had a cage in back, and he wouldn't say what was in the cage, but um, he said he'd never told that experience before. And the the guys driving it were military, and he stopped them for speeding, <coughs> and uh, they said. And when, and he said, just let us go. And, and he felt it would be, it'd be best to just let him go on. And he was unwilling to tell us what was in the cage in the back of their their vehicle. So something's going on there. Uh, we we didn't capture anything at all. We went on your typical Bigfoot hunt day and night. We saw maybe a footprint in one area. Um, but most of the time when you go out hunting for these paranormal Bigfoot creatures, nothing really happens. That's that's the general experience. They they seem to be controlling, you know, the events that you're going to have. So it's just likely it's going to happen when you're just sitting around doing nothing. Then, then you're actually trying to hunt them down. Except in these hot spots, these 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 hot spots we're beginning to encounter. I have a good friend who actually, uh, you know, comes on my show quite often, and actually has seen Bigfoot quite often, and it. You know, again, they have not shown any aggression towards them, and it's always in the same area. But again, I, I, I don't know. I just don't know if there are a flesh and you know blood uh, creature, or if they're a shapeshifter, or uh, maybe a alien of some sort. But all I know is I can tell you this: when I was up in the Canadian Rockies, I wasn't looking for anything. You know, I couldn't bring a weapon into Canada, so we had no weapons. We were dumb. We didn't even think about bear spray or anything, and here we were out in the middle of, you know, nowhere. And the bad part for us, and Alan, you're smart uh, by using, you know, carrying bear spray, because when we got back to the car and we took off and we drove about 15 miles, we ran into a little country store and we stopped. The owner of the store knew we were really shook up. 
And we said, we saw Bigfoot. I mean, we were really emotionally gone at that point. And, you know, the guy said, yes, there's been Bigfoot reported in this area quite often. But he said what really scared me. He goes, a week before that, there was a man and a wife that went out, you know, hiking. And she either got hurt or got sick. He went to get help. By the time, a couple hours later, by the time they got back with help, she was half eaten by a bear. So, I mean, people, if you're going out there looking for Bigfoot or going out in the forest, you know, I really recommend even more something stronger than bear spray because you could run into, depending on where you're at, you got cougars, you got mountain lions, you got bears, you got other things that can attack you. And I, I tell you what, you know, I, I, your life is worth more than, you know, uh, just not carrying something. It's crazy not to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You got to be careful out there. <laughs> Can you hear us? Yeah, you're there. I heard a little buzz for a second, but you guys are there. Yeah, we, you know, we got these old landlines on our phones. I'm sorry to go dead. We just switched phones. But, you know... Could, do you think that creature that chased you could have caught you if it wanted to? I think it could have. I, I, I think if we were farther away uh, than the car was, uh, I, I don't know. I was scared. This thing, like I said, it, it showed aggression. I mean, you know, th- this the the screams it made, that was enough to, it, it, you know, scare you. I, I, I served in Vietnam, like I said. This scared me worse than anything in Vietnam. I... I haven't wet my pants since I was like in kindergarten. Uh, I wet my pants when that thing screamed and, and came after us. That's how scared I was. It, it it showed aggression all the way all the way up to we got out of there. If we would have hung around there and 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 I think it would have defended its territory. I don't think I'd be talking to you, but maybe I'm wrong. But I I, I can tell you it showed nothing but a, a aggression towards us. So, so that's the kind of contact experience, you know. Do you know who Bobo is from from Finding Bigfoot? Yeah, I know about him. Yes, he was one of the co-hosts. Um, you know, he was a flesh and blood guy throughout the whole show, and I think Alan, who knew him before, he said he never talked about the paranormal. Right. Yeah. But uh, he he shared some experiences that that they had had filming Finding Bigfoot where. He said uh, they weren't filming at the time. The crew was all just kind of standing around waiting to set up the next shot, and, and two Bigfoot crossed the ridge line in front of them, and the, everybody saw it, and both of them, both the Bigfoot had a like a blue uh, orb glowing from each of their hands, which I thought was really interesting. And, and then he had an experience similar to you when, when some Bigfoot showed up and kind of chased him. Remember he described that? Yeah. And he said he was going to turn around, and take a picture, and there's this thing called, is it mind speak? Mm-hmm. There, there's this phenomenon where where alien intelligences can kind of speak to you through ESP, and he said he heard a very profound voice saying, if you take turn around and take a picture, I'm going to kill you. So he yeah. didn't. <laughs> yes, he didn't. Well, that's a good reason not to turn around. You know, I was really... It, even in my mind, it was really hard because I've had so many people tell me that they encountered Bigfoot. And, you know, when I tell people what I saw, you know, I had so many people who, you know, professional hunters, if they classify themselves a Bigfoot. They said, oh, I've never heard of Bigfoot run on two legs, four legs. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Ed Romans. He, in Canada, he's like one of the top folk singers in Canada. Okay. Very well known if you, you know, Google his name. I mean, he's had some major hits. He's well known. Anyway, he came on my show because he heard my my to- uh, story one time about Bigfoot. He We talked for about a half an hour before we went on the air. And he lives out, you know, in British Columbia. He lives on a farm he owns. But near the farm, there's the forest. So him and his dog would go out there daily on a path and just walk out in nature. And he said one day he was walking, and all of a sudden, about a thousand feet in front of him, they saw a Bigfoot. The Bigfoot saw him and then chased him and ran towards him. The one thing he noticed, the same thing I noticed, he said it ran between two legs, four legs, 
two legs, four legs. And he said he took a couple good looks a couple different times while he was running. Where I only turned around once or twice and saw it. But I that's the part I, I'm kind of confused because I hear all these people say, oh, no, they don't run on two fours. That don't make logical sense. I don't know. Have you guys heard any of that? I just out of curiosity. Well, I've, I've definitely heard reports of uh, there was one from Ohio where uh, I wasn't the investigator on it, but a farmer said, I saw a bear walk across my field and then it stood up on two legs and walked up the hill. Uh, so those those kinds of reports. I've definitely had experiences where um, where I believe they've crawled, like belly crawled towards me. Um, so I, I would think that running on all fours would definitely be something that is a possibility. And, and so, you know, they're, they're testing you. They're seeing what... How how are you going to respond? They're kind of experimenting with you, kind of like alien alien abductions, if you like. If they are alien, they're playing with you. They were checking you out to see what you were going to do. Well, they saw and what I did. I'll tell you that. Huh? I said they saw what I did. I ran out of there as fast as I could along with my friend. Well, they probably found that interesting. Well, they probably... Even more interesting pro- if you turned around and and welcome then then maybe something else would have happened well you know i'm i almost killed my friend over it too because like i said when we got to the car i had one thought in my mind was to get the hell out of there and i remember getting into the car you know getting my butt in there and starting it and shoving it in gear as my friend was just getting to the car door and open it and dragging him i could have ran over him uh, you know, and it took me dragging him maybe 25, 30, 40 feet before I realized I was dragging him because that's how scared I was. So, so may, maybe the whole point of it is if you hadn't had that experience, we wouldn't be talking with you now. I don't know. I, I you, all, you know, I haven't even brought this subject up to about a year ago. And, uh, of course, my friend James out there who, you know, kind of is on the show here tonight with us. He likes throwing us little things in about orbs, <laughs> don't you, James? Yeah, once in a while, I, I like to throw it in. I got to tell you, I've never uh, come across anybody that socialized orbs with the Bigfoot, but I guess there's some out there. Yeah, there's some people claim that or you know, uh, Bigfoot give off orbs and communicate, you know, by sending orbs down your neck and all this stuff. And I, I just that part I don't buy. I'm sorry. Well, you know, if they're actually alien and they have many many capabilities they're they're probably they can probably do lots of lots of things that you know are are quite strange and quite powerful and strong and things we could never do some people say they can imitate any kind of voice any kind of sound we make they they can imitate at least some of them and they're probably you know there's probably multiple ones they're not all the same and they may have their own their own sort of other alien connection there's I, th- I think there are there are there are more experiences. More people are talking about them, and I believe it seems like they're moving towards some sort of singularity in itself, which is probably the realization that that there are that there are aliens and they're kind of here already, um, which they should be, considering you know what the number of possibilities for other life that is, that people are projecting now in the time frame where they could be 300 million years ahead of us, and they certainly could have gotten here, whatever whatever they are, and if they're probably here, they're not flesh and blood because that seems to be a bitch to, to travel these long distances in our kind of feeble little bodies. Oh, yeah. Hey, now we're going to have to go on break here for about four minutes at the top of the hour. You guys want to hang around for the, like the next half an hour, and we'll kind of wrap it up. But I will say this. You know, I do believe there is aliens abducting people because I've had Calvin Parker, for example, on my show. I've had Timothy Cullen and a whole bunch of people that claim that they were abducted by aliens. And you know what? Virtually all of them said that they thought their encounter was evil. Anyway, I'll let you guys think about that during the break. Go get a cup of coffee or whatever. We'll be back in four minutes. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio with our guests, Ronald uh, Meyer and his friend, Alan. We'll be back. Should I go get my other phone? 